Hello everyone, I've been contemplating doing a video on this topic for a while, but a recent intriguing video put out by PBS spurred me to actually make a video on this topic. So let's jump right in. I'm talking about index fossils. Index fossils are fossils that denote specific time periods and or climatic conditions. They have short, vertical range and strata, are widespread in distribution, and have distinct species that rapidly undergo evolutionary trends. I mentioned these in the video I did with Polygia titled Doubting Darwin Day as a type of relative dating. Relative dating is a method of giving materials dates by putting them in relative chronological orders. There are no definitive dates associated with relative dating methods, but those dates can be gleaned through absolute dating methods, such as radiometric dating or dendrochronology. One example of an index fossil, and the one the PBS video chose, is the conodont. Conodonts are jawless chordates, classified in the superclass Agnatha, that first appeared in the Cambrian and went extinct at the end of the Triassic. Due to their widespread distribution and distinct species, the chronological order of many different layers is defined by the presence of certain conodonts. For example, the last age of the Triassic is the Ration, the start of which is defined by the presence of the conodont Missichella poststernsteini. Ammonoids also make great index fossils. These are cephalopods that first appeared in the Devonian around 400 million years ago and went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous around 65 million years ago. One such ammonoid index fossil is Scaphides which only lived during the Cretaceous period, or from 146 to 65 million years ago. Closely related to cephalopods are gastropods, and some of these have been used as index fossils as well. Viviparis glacialis dates to a Pleistocene interglacial period called the Tiglian, which occurred 500,000 years ago. Foraminiferans, diatoms, radiolarians, and coccolithophores similarly leave remains that make great index fossils. The reason all these organisms are so good at being preserved is that they form tough calcium shells. In foraminiferans, generally shortened to just foram, their extremely gradual evolution has allowed researchers to pinpoint the direct ancestors of certain taxa. For instance, the common ancestor of all macro, perforate, spinose, and non-spinose forams is the Cretaceous Paleocene genus Hedbergella. Another foram species, Dictyoconus walnutensis, marks the beginning of the Middle Albion Age in the early Cretaceous. Now, most of the time, animal index fossils are invertebrates, or very small vertebrates, because they are more short-lived and susceptible to climatic changes. However, some tetrapods can also be index fossils. An example of this is members of the reptilian morph order Croniosuchia. Late Permian-Russian stratigraphic ages called the Vyatkian and Severodvinian are defined by the presence of Croniosuchians, Croniosuchus paradoxus, for the former, and Croniosaurus levis for the latter. Now, why is all of this important? Index fossils exist because the global flood and Genesis creation story didn't happen. If the Genesis creation narrative actually occurred, then all the index fossils would start at the same time in the past, which happens to be day six in the story. However, index fossils don't all start at the same time, they come into existence at different times and coincide with specific geological events in Earth's history, such as the Permian-Triassic extinction and Cretaceous-Paleocene extinction. And if a global flood occurred, then the fossils would be all mixed up. We'd never be able to use index fossils to denote time periods, but we can. They also don't show any evidence of hydrologic sorting, since that would favor heavier and more streamlined organisms being deposited in deep strata. But, even if a tumultuous global flood did occur, then that wouldn't cause hydrologic sorting anyway, because a flood would jumble up the strata. However, here's where things get funny. Creationist organizations, like Answers in Genesis, use the names of geologic periods, Cambrian, Triassic, Cretaceous, etc., to describe strata. So, creationists use the names that geologists invented to order the ancient layers when talking about what creationists believe is young strata. This means creationists are either unaware or ignorant of index fossils that are used to date ages. 
This may not be especially surprising, since neither the Young Earth Creationist Answers in Genesis, nor the Institute for Creation Research, nor the Old Earth Intelligent Design Discovery Institute has a page dedicated to them. Creation Ministries International does in an article titled, Index Fossils, Really? But all they do is misrepresent biological stasis, don't worry, I'll do a video on this eventually, claim that some fossils are out of place without ever showing how they could be, and forget to actually discuss any examples of index fossils. Seriously, they don't name one index fossil in the body of the article. I would be convinced that they don't know what index fossils are, but, and oh what a but, they provide pictures of two fossils that are considered index fossils. Thus, the author googled pictures of index fossils, but forgot to explain why either of the fossils weren't really index fossils. So, you see that index fossils are great indicators of the old age of the Earth and track the evolution of life over that time. You also see that creationists have no scientifically valid way to deal with these fossils. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.